In today's video, we're going to check out GBT40 Mini and Zapier. We're going to make sure you know how to get access to this model. Furthermore, show you why it's even important to use this model as it's 60% cheaper than past models. And finally, you're going to learn best practices when it comes to creating chat GBT prompts within Zapier. Let's jump in. Earlier this week, I did an entire video showcasing why the GBT40 Mini model is such a big deal, especially in the context of automations and software and accessing AI for a business. If you want to see an entire video dedicated to that, check it out right there. This video specifically comes from one of the comments I got from my viewers basically saying, hey, Corbin, this looks cool. Can you show me how to use it in Zapier and show me how to prompt? Well, I'm here to do it. Let's do it. Coming over to Zapier, let's create a new Zap. Create Zap. Now, the purposes of this video is purely going to be for prompting. So you're going to learn how to create prompts for ChatGPT. Therefore, I'm going to set up a dummy trigger here, which is just going to be a scheduler. Continue. Choose a day. 12 a.m. Continue. Test trigger. Doesn't matter. Because what matters for us is to play around for ChatGPT block. So I'm going to do ChatGPT. I'm going to go ahead and link a playlist here that is over 90 videos long of me doing a lot of stuff when it comes to Zapier and artificial intelligence. So if you like this video and you've clicked on this video and you're like, Corbin, I want to learn more, 90 videos, which is probably like 120 hours at this point. Let's keep going here. We're going to do a conversation. Hit continue. Choose your account. Continue. And here we go. Now, the first thing that may not be available for you is going to be the model itself. So how do we troubleshoot that? Well, first off, I'm going to go to leave this article in the description down below that allows you to read the implications of using Zapier and API with AI. But in reality, all it takes for you to do is go to OpenAI's dashboard here, set up an account, pay five bucks, and you get access to it. Now, the reason getting access to this specific model is a big deal is that it's 60% cheaper and more effective than past models when it came to GPT-4. As a quick summarization, GPT-4 is for human-like outputs, stuff that the user will see. 3.5 is for summarization and getting very specific data points within an input and an output in a block. If that doesn't really make sense, think of GPT-4 as like you want to use that for writing your email, writing an article, writing social media captions. This is a more advanced model or it's smarter than 3.5, all right? This model can be used in a plethora of different contexts, such as assistance API, fine tuning, and everything above the board there, which I go into in this channel. So you can check that out. This though, is let's learn how to prompt. Now, what's really cool and probably what you already know already is that within ChatGPT logic that's in Zapier, we can use previous data points in our prompt itself. So for example, we have the previous data points of the date that this was scheduled on. So now you know it's July 21st for me, 2024, uh, day a month, Sunday, stuff like that. This could be previous outputs from, you know, a email that was sent or an email coming in, everything of that realm. Knowing that though, the best way to handle this, if we're not using assistance API, which is a lasered version of these kind of chat bot like models. And it's like, we're doing a broad slate here. We want to start with context. Once we put context, we're going to put semicolon, and then we will proceed with giving context of the specific use case this chat GPT block has in this flow. So I guess in this context, because of the fact that we're starting with a scheduler and we have like our pretty date year, let's just have its purpose being like, what is the next day? Your purpose might be you're an email writer, you're an article writer, you're a et cetera, et cetera. So for me, I'm just going to say you are a calendar and I provide you with a date and you give me the output of the next day. When prompting and using chat GPT prompts, recognize that the amount of text that you use within the prompt is actually going to be push towards the overall cost associated with running that AI prompt. But to be very honest with you and very clear with you, due to the trend in the market when it comes to AI being cheaper and cheaper to get access to, you don't have to worry too much about being very conservative with the amount of text you use in the prompt. In the past, I have had a different opinion on this, but the reason I had a different opinion on this was because when I was making those videos a year ago, the ability to access GPT-4 cost hundreds of percent more than what it costs now. Therefore, we can add it a lot more through our workflows than we were originally planning on doing. So once we add context, we need to add the relevant thing that it's going to read and understand for the prompt. So for this, it's very simple. We're going to provide the data point of the day or the day that this incurred. So it gives us the next day. So you are a calendar and I provide you with the date and you give me the output of the next day. Okay. So since we referenced it as date, we'll do it here. Date, semicolon, parentheses to enclose the data point. And when I say data point, I'm re referencing this stuff right here. This is a data point. Click here and boom. Now this is a actionable prompt that has live variables that'll be inputted into it. What I want you to take from this is that if you're doing an article writer, you would write something out in the long lines of you're an article writer. Here is your parameters, which we'll get into a little bit here. But 
you're an article writer, here is the topic. So maybe date wasn't going to be the reference point here. It's going to be topic. And then you'd put in some variable for topic. How do I get the topic, Corbin? How about you make a chat GPT block before that, that makes the topic and then puts it into there. You can do a lot of layering effects when it comes to chat GPT prompts. Now, one really great example of this is a couple months ago, I did an entire video showing you how to create a automatic AI ebook generator. Like automatic, it was like 30 minutes long. You can put them on Amazon KDP. Check it out right there if you want to see a layering effect where it's like we could output entire books automatically. This can show you the level of craziness we can get with these kind of chaining effects. But for now, we just want to know the next day. What's the next day, Chad GPT? What day is it? So now that we have the middle section of our prompt being purely for variable context, we're going to add another thing here as I'm going to show you other things you can reference that's going to help you out when it comes to dictation and prompting for whatever it may be. One other one can be parameter. Now with parameter, we're going to outline very specific formatting stuff that we care about. So for example, this parameter, I could say output should be mm slash dd slash yyyy, month, date, year, or month, day, year. That's specific to this context. Your context could be max of four sentences for the output, output, the subject line, and then the body. Like this is where you're going to identify how you want it to be formatted out. How do you want the output to look? So for now, we're just gonna go with parameter. Output should be mm, dd, yy. Proceed in this manner. Now there's other tricks we can do here. One trick that you can do is add a format block as well. So you can either go with parameter or format. You can do format, semicolon, and then proceed with the specific type of format you're looking for. Maybe you're looking for an HTML output. So HTML output, because you're doing an email for a body and you wanna add bold text and everything of that nature. The way I'm prompting here in an automation software like Zapier is entirely different than how I would prompt when dealing with code and building a software. If you're interested in seeing how to prompt in that way, I'll leave a video right there. It goes over best practices and five major steps that are entailed with creating a good prompt in the context of software. But in automation software, it can be a lot simpler. If you feel like you learned something up to this point, make sure to leave a like, it's completely free. And here is one last little tip I'm gonna leave you with. If it gets annoying and you're getting like, hey, here's your answer. And then it gives you your answer. And you're like, Chad GBT, just give me the answer. Stop giving me all this extra text. A phrasing I like to use is no text before or after. What this tells Chad GBT is that the output should be MMDDYYYY. That sounded like a robot there. With no text before and no text after. Let's test it. To test, we're going to come down here to continue tester step. And there you go, y'all. 0722-2024. No text before, no text after. Now out of curiosity, let's see if it would add text before and after without that. And on top of that, you want to ensure you're using a memory key. This is extremely important. This is what's gonna allow for consistent outputs at scale and therefore ChatGPT doesn't just go crazy on you. Memory keys can be a random string of 32 characters as such. Kind of like when you wanna make a password for a site that you don't really like, but you kind of make an account so you're making like a crazy password that you'll probably forget, that kind of thing. <laughs> Continue and test step. Now I should expect possibly words before and after. Didn't happen this time, but sometimes it will. So use that as you will. Last thing I'm gonna leave you with is the playlist. This right here, if you want to really get a full comprehensive idea of how to leverage AI for your business, for automation, check it out. Especially the first two videos. These are gonna give you the tools, the understandings and the implications of using software in this manner. And then if you wanna get crazy, you got a ton to go through. A ton, Corbin. A ton. It's not done yet. Another page. It's not done yet. Another page. It's not done yet. Another page. Like, this is no joke, y'all. This is like 1.5 years of my life right here. Okay? <laughs> so check it out. Make sure you subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Go ahead and check out that playlist in the description down below. These are two random videos based off the clicks, the way you've been engaging. If you are new to this channel, my name is Corbin Brown. Check me out, and I'll see you in the next video.